everybody. Um, we'll be get, getting started in just a moment. Just want to make sure everyone can connect up. Uh, we'll be taking your questions in the chat as well. So please do an, um, answer the chat. Um, please let us know where you're, where you're coming from, where you're watching from, and also if you uh, have a favorite fish. Let's get started, I think. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Nancy and I just wanted to uh, uh, give a little introduction to the museum to start off with. Um, we're very lucky today to be taking a behind the scenes look into the, the fish collection with Nicola Bailly. And uh, we're going, and so uh, Nicola will be presenting today or speaking with us and, and thank you for that. Um, also, I'm here, I'm a museum interpreter as well as Kashapa, another museum interpreter. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, uh, mention where the Bini Biodiversity Museum is. I want to acknowledge that we're on the traditional ancestral and unceded land of the Musqueam. Um, if you're interested, I do recommend you checking out their website at um, www.masqueam.bc.ca. And uh, we love learning about the uh, culture of the Musqueam at our museum as well. So where we are within the UBC campus, you can see it's sort of in the middle there. Um, and we are across from, for example, the Pacific Museum of Earth. Uh, we are next to the um, uh, Aquatic Ecosystems Building and the uh, Biosciences Building. We're close to the bookstore in the center there. And when you arrive at the museum, this is what it looks like. And you can see fresh water and, and marine. And after one year and a half in Crete, where I joined a, a European project uh, on, on biodiversity databases, I, uh, I came here in, uh, in Vancouver um, uh, for family reasons. And I uh, found this uh, night museum where I finally uh, set, settled down. So um, the BT Museum has, has an important uh, fish collections in terms of number and in terms of Northern Pacific uh, fish re representation. Uh, how it was created? Well, at the beginning, a uh, few people uh, uh, collected uh, specimens in and there, here and there, uh, starting at the end of the 19th century. And uh, finally, they were gathered by uh, uh, the Dr. Fraser, uh, who was the first head of the Department of Zoology. And uh, he gave all of this, uh, this collection uh, to the department, to the department. But the first uh, cataloging effort and, and the first uh, really rise up of the collection was after the Second World War and on the initiative of the Institute of Fisheries at, at that time. Uh, so, and, and the, the, the fish in, in a collection, what is important is to uh, uh, clearly and, 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 and uh, systematically uh, catalog the specimen. Otherwise, when, when the collection grows and when you want specific specimens, if they are not properly catalogued, you cannot find them. So it's, it's one important uh, uh, activity of uh, every collection manager. So the cataloging started really in 1953. And it was, so I can show you that maybe. Uh, if my uh, camera is uh, reverted. Uh, Okay, you, you can see in this cabinet in my office, you have uh, a number of folders. It's, it's uh, uh, hard, hard uh, paper uh, cards where people reported uh, uh, the list of specimens. These cards have been, uh, um, have been computerized and are available uh, in, in the uh, digital center in the uh, library uh, Irving Barber uh, in, uh, in, in, in UBC. So you can see, uh, I will show you 
sorry, I didn't share yet my, uh, my screen, which I will do now. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. Okay. So I hope that everyone can see um, my screen. So these cards, uh, the number of them is more than 11,000 11, were all scanned. And you have at the top of the card the location of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the collection and the list of species that were uh, collected uh, at, at that time so it's it's not the real first start of the of the cataloging uh, it started by another one that i will show you like this uh, i am freezing i think yes uh, am i but all collection so you see it's uh it's uh it's sometimes quite difficult to read uh but it was like that then they moved to this card system and uh starting in the mid 70s they um uh, they started to uh, create a database that was achieved in uh in 1978 and this is a printout of the entire database uh, at the at the time of uh, 1968. So you see the the the, the thickness of, of the thing. Uh, I, I I don't know how many pages, and it was uh, printed in in this old uh, fashion uh, printers, you know, with the the whole uh, the all in the paper and and everything was listed in in different orders by taxon by tax, by geography and, and 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 so on so now we have a database that is uh, present uh, on on the web and uh, uh, uh -huh. that is present on on the web and that you can uh, query uh, you have, for example, uh, one, one, one species here, and you can see uh, its location, and you can even link back to the, uh, 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 to the uh, scan of, of the card. So it's obviously a, a big improvement for, for managing uh, collections because you have everything at hand. Uh, uh, behind your 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 desk, and and you can make a, a lot of things uh, e easily. However, uh, to manage your collections, you need also a lot of books, uh, especially when you uh, you have uh, fishes from all the, all around the world. It's not it's not entirely the case in uh, in in our collection because let's say eighty percent of the specimens come from the north uh, eastern Pacific, but uh, uh, the Institute of Fisheries has conducted uh, in, in in the past time some expedition in Malaysia in in, in um, Panama in Ecuador, so in in total we have more than three. 3,500 species. So to identify or to verify the identification of the specimen, you, you need a lot of, uh, of, uh, of, of books, of pictures. Uh, so you see behind me, there is a, a lot of these books. In another cabinet, we have a, a lot of books as well. Uh, and it's always uh, easier to have in the same area your library and your specimens so you don't need to 
to run uh, uh, between each other each time that you need to uh, uh, check the, identi uh, the identification of the specimen. Uh, but now we also have other data database um, that I have our time to reach at that point because of the uh, uh, thing. Uh -huh. How are we doing that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see. Yeah. Here it is. So in fishes, uh, we we have uh, access to two main databases that are extremely useful in the management of uh, fish biodiversity and fish collections in in particular. You have something that is called uh, uh, the uh, Eschmeyer uh, catalogs of fishes. It's a catalog of all fish species on Earth. Uh, I can query uh, a, a species, let's say the, the Atlantic uh, code, and you have the information of the first description on the species. You have some information on the type specimen. I will come back on uh, what it means, type specimen. And you have a citation of people having uh, said something about the taxonomy or the distribution of, of the species. And the current status, it says it's a valid species with a valid name, uh, Gadus moria, that was described by Linnaeus. Uh, I hope you can see that maybe. Uh, this database is entirely taxonomic and nomenclural. There is no other information that the taxonomic and nomenclatural uh, validity and, and, and various uh, situation. And if it is marine or freshwater and a broad, a broad distribution. The second database, um, uh, at the head of which I was in the in the Philippines is uh, called a fish base, uh, and here you have uh, uh, many other information. Uh, I will query the same uh, the same species. That is Moria. Oh, search. And here you have. Uh, much more information. So, sure, a summary of, of the classification and and the common names and 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 the, the synonyms and and all that stuff. But principally, it comes from from catalog of, of fishes. But then you have much more uh, information on detailed information on the on the distribution. Uh, um, the length, the maximal length, the length at maturity, uh, a short description, a uh, short text on biology and reproduction, and so on. And you have, you know, additional information on all the links that are blue. So, fish base was basically created for fishery management. That's why you have so many. Uh, very technical and 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 uh, uh, population dynamics and and biological uh, information for the collection. Well, what is nice is uh, these maps and and the distribution uh, by, by country. Uh, you can see here that we have quickly an ID uh, where where the species is. This map has to be improved because here Gadus moria is a, a marine species, and it it it, it shows the, the country uh, where where uh, it is present uh, on on the coast coastline. But uh, this allow really to cross check very quickly information and avoid uh, some um, some uh, distribution. So. Um, after all this effort of cataloging and and, uh, and 
and databasing, where do we stand in, the, in terms of number of specimens? In the, uh, in the history of, uh, in the history of, of, of the collection, it is written that we hold uh, 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 800,000 specimens. Well, uh, it's not exactly uh, that. Uh, apparently, we hold 350,000 specimens here in, 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 the, in, in the collection. The thing is that in the database was also input the results of many um, surveys in, in, in the rivers of British Columbia. And they added this observation where they didn't collect uh, uh, the specimens to the database, which en ended up with eight, 800,000 specimens, both preserved and observed. So anyway, it's, it's a nice resources for, uh, uh, for British Columbia to have all these uh, records because most of them are geo-coordinated and uh, it can be used uh, for many, many purposes. I, I said we, we have uh, um, um, more than uh, 3,500 species. Um, and we have also a number of type specimens. So what are the type specimens? These are specimens used to fix the name of the species. Uh, types have sometimes been uh, confused with the uh, archetype of the species. You know, the species on which, uh, uh, the specimen on which a species has been described. But it's not, not, not that re really. It's the type specimen have to do with nomenclature. So this, this specimen has been given this name forever. And after that, if you can identify other specimen belonging to the same lineage, to the same species, it, it just in a way subjective. It's always uh, an hypothesis of identification. Uh, hopefully, this system works well and, and it works in 95% uh, of the cases, but otherwise we couldn't give names to, the, to other specimens uh, that, of which the species has, has, has been already described. But that we have always to keep in mind that that the names that are given in books, in, in papers, uh, or, or in websites can be revised, can be changed, and, and, it's, and it's all the job of taxonomists to put some order in uh, all these names based on sp specimens that are kept in, in collection. And the time specimen for, the, for that are extremely valuable and are specimens that that are uh, uh, that must um, take care of, uh, especially in some museums. They even keep the type specimen in rooms that are protected against flood, uh, fire, and everything that could damage uh, them. Keep at at the uh, same temperature and so on. So it's true in all groups. Obviously, it's not true in uh, only in, 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 in fishes. In the collection, we have about uh, uh, 150 specimens that represent uh, maybe uh, uh, 20, 20 species that are types, and they are all put in uh, one, one cabinet. There is no special protection, but at least uh, if uh, other colleagues uh, from all around the world ask to see uh, the specimen or we send them pictures or measurements, uh, we can find them e e easily. 
excuse me. Um, so, uh, specimens are used for taxonomy, are used for identification, are used to fix the nomenclature, but uh, specimens that are accumulated uh, there were caught for other purposes and can be used for different purposes. So uh, the main part of the collection has been collected uh, by the, uh, the old Institute of Fisheries as part of the uh, stock fishery uh, stocks survey. So every year they collected, uh, they conducted a, a number of cruises, they collected uh, fish, they kept some to put them in, in the collection. But you see, these specimens are at the, at the, at the purpose. But uh, people are always asking, well, why do you keep uh, uh, so many specimens? It's true that it's, it's costly. It has a cost, especially uh, for fishes where you have to buy alcohol, uh, vials that are not, uh, not always uh, cheap. Uh, you need personnel to uh, curate the, the collection. Um, so why it takes space? You, you have seen on the on the map of the collection uh, at the beginning uh, how much uh, space the, the fish collection uh, takes. Well, for sure we always reply. First, we 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 have to to. Uh, fix and normalize the taxonomy and these specimens are there but specimens can be used for uh, other purpose and um, recently uh, with uh, some uh, colleagues uh, in australia and, and china we published a, a paper uh, demonstrating that uh, specimen fish specimen in collection could be used to derive length weight relationship so it's simple uh, relation uh, if, in, that you can use afterwards to estimate the biomass uh, of, of, of your specimens only if only you have uh, the length and these uh, uh, relationship are extremely valuable in fisheries and and also in uh, in a video survey uh, now uh, we have uh, uh, colleagues in australia uh, who are conducting a, a project where they emer emerge uh, uh, video cameras in various places of the world uh, in in along the coast or uh, in the middle of oceans and after that they analyze uh, the species uh, that were captured by this uh, camera, and they can measure the, the length uh, through the image, but obviously they cannot measure the weight. But with the length weight relationships, they can, uh, they can uh, uh, estimate the biomass that they have seen in a certain period of time uh, and and in the place where they, they put the camera, so it give it gives an idea uh, on, on the abundance of species and and their productivity. Also, uh, um, to study the the, the uh, traffic uh, uh, network, uh, you can analyze the stomach content of of your specimens. But you can also use now uh, a, a chemical uh, chemical technique with a radio element with isotopes, and it happens that we can analyze the um, uh, the uh, museum specimen uh, to derive what they ate during during their life. And again, it has a lot of interest because, uh, you know, conducting, conducting uh, cruises or expedition 
uh, is extremely costly. It's difficult to have money uh, uh, to 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 uh, to conduct uh, these cruises, and and you have already a lot of specimen at hand in in, in museum, so they can use uh, for that purpose and for other purposes, especially fishes that are extremely rare uh, and rarely caught. Uh, for example, most of the uh, deep sea uh, fishes are known by one, two, three, and up to 10 specimens. Uh, some, some, some species are abundant and targeted by, by fisheries in, in the depths of between 1,000 and, and 1,500 meters, but all the species that are below that, uh, uh, that limit, you know, they are caught extremely rarely. One thing that, unfortunately, and, and so far, uh, that uh, uh, fish specimen cannot be used to is to uh, uh, sequence, uh, to get the DNA sequence, uh, because uh, fish specimen are first fixed in formalin and then preserved in alcohol, but the formalin entirely destroy DNA. Not entirely, but it, it cuts it in, in little molecules and, and making analysis of these little molecules that have not given a lot of results uh, so far. Um, Hi, Nicola. I just yep. wanted to go back a little bit. Uh, Sheila had a question. Uh, yep. she, she asks, uh, where are these cameras situated? Below surface, but at a particular depth? She wonders. Oh, oh yes. Uh, usually they are, let's say, uh, 10 meters below the surface. Um, or as they are fixed uh, on the bottom if, if it's in a coastal uh, area. And they have deployed this camera uh, in many places uh, around the world. First uh, around Australia, but I know that there are cameras now in the eastern central Atlantic and in the central Pacific. I don't remember exactly where. Um, and, and they are put, when they are in, in oceanic uh, environment, they obviously uh, are put uh, at some depth because otherwise uh, the waves would have uh, too much uh, uh, impact on, on, on the camera. Great, thank you. And I also had another question. Um, have you seen people, like have you had requests to dissect your specimens in the time that you've been at the museum? Is that common where you go inside? Because you are, I guess, sacrificing the outside a bit, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, uh, it happens. Uh, people use uh, specimens um, to to verify or, or to to uh, analyze for first uh, the anatomy of a of a species or for other reasons. Um, uh, but it doesn't happen uh, very, very often, but it happens. Uh, other uses of the specimens are, are uh, uh, loans uh, uh, for exhibitions. Um, so we have some specimens uh, here, here and there in, uh, in, in British Columbia in, in various uh, smaller uh, museums. Um, and um, last year, uh, for, for example, I had uh, the visit of a Chinese colleague who wanted to see uh, uh, the fish of a specific family. So she took pictures, uh, uh, she dissected uh, one, uh, one specimen. So for sure, like, like librarians, uh, curators don't like when people damage uh, their specimens. <laughs> we are very protective, <laughs> but, but it's, um, it's, it's a normal way. For sure, if we have a very rare species, uh, only one specimen, uh, we, we refuse any, any uh, uh, damaging uh, treatment. Uh, but, but now with a new technology like the CT microscan and so on, uh, a lot can be done without damaging uh, specimens. 
Thank you. And then I just had one more question from Sheila that just popped up. Um, she says, uh, regarding the DNA of fish, are species collected and preserved directly in alcohol in order to do sequencing, or are tissue samples taken instead? instead? And you were just about to talk about that. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, uh, yes, 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 and no. Uh, it depends on, on the size. Uh, alcohol is not a good uh, fixator. Uh, it, it's a good uh, preserving fluid, but, but not good at, at fixing the tissue. Or if you want to do that, you need to, to every 12 hours change the alcohol so it keeps a, a high tidal, uh, high concentration. It's extremely difficult. Uh, I told you I work in the uh, museum in Paris, and and with my uh, my boss we reorganized uh, the collection of Getty forms of codes. And one day we open a, a, a vial and file, and and my boss took the, the fish by the head, and and it completely disintegrated in in little pieces of fish in alcohol uh, and obviously this fish was fixed only with alcohol and, and, and badly fixed. So for at least for big specimens what we do we 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 pre, uh, 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 we, 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 we cut a uh, we we cut a fin a part of the fin or we we take uh, some sample in the dorsal uh, area uh, in the muscles, uh, in the dorsal muscles, on the right side, because there is a convention in fishes that the left side should be preserved. It's uh, mostly how a fish are oriented for uh, pictures, drawing, and, and and so on. So it's a convention. So so we we we, we take tissue samples that we uh, store in another place. Obviously, uh, with the difficulties that we have to keep the link between the tissue and the specimen, but it's part of the job. For smaller specimens and for larvae, for instance, alcohol is sometimes used as the as as the fixator and the, the preserving uh, fluid. It, it, it happens and and it works, but beyond. Two centimeters. Uh, it's very difficult to 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 keep uh, fishes in good shape only in alcohol. Is there other question? Uh, not right now, but thank you for those answers. Uh, I I have finished my talk. Uh, do we have time to try to make a tour in 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 the collection? I think a few minutes, yeah, for sure. I think that'd be interesting. Thank you. Okay, so um, let me see how can I, uh, ah, yes. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go. I will. If anybody has questions right now, you're, please do feel free to type them in the chat and we'll get to them either in the Facebook chat or in the uh, Zoom chat. Thank you. Okay. Do you hear me correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, well, first in, in, in the office, I have a a pumpkin seed uh, fish that is alone uh, during this time and in the dark it will become uh, very soon a, a cave fish so the in a close view the the, the folder with uh, with the cards that are not really useful anymore in a way because they are all scanned and in, in digital uh, format I think uh, uh, earlier Nicole was asking about where they were stored, um, but like you said, it, there's also the digital format in the Irving K. Barber building.
So uh, recently, we we have acquired a, a photograph system that is not here. This is uh, the one for 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 burn. But we will have the same system except that now the technique to take a, a fish specimen a, a picture of fish specimen is that instead of having the, the, the camera like that, it's horizontal and we, we place here on aquarium and, and, and a very flat uh, 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 plexiglass boxy so the, the fish can stand uh, right away between the two uh, the two, gla two glasses and this avoids to have too much reflection uh, by the uh, light uh, light spot so it will be installed somewhere here here when the birds and mammals people will free my space <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> So let's uh, let's go in the collection. So I, I something that I appreciate very much here is that I have the collections at my hand right away. You see, in in thirty seconds. In the middle of the it was much more, we had to cross a, a, a courtyard and, and the botanical garden before accessing the, the specimen. So we have uh, 12, uh, sorry, 10, 10 rows uh, like this. And the specimens are, are, are put in, uh, in, uh, in the shelves uh, like any, any, any other specimen. But we have some curiosities. Here you have skeletons that were prepared. So you see a, a rock, a rock fish, the skeleton. So uh, people can consult uh, this uh, prepared uh, skeleton. So we, you see that we have uh, quite a number of, uh, of them. We have also uh, jaws, jaws of uh, sharks. Uh, and, and we have a, 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 a number of, of them. Nicole was saying that there are more boxes than she expected. And to be honest, I've actually never seen the boxes myself. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you know, it, it took, when I arrived, it took me time to, to discover everything. And even now, I, 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 sometimes I have to scratch my head. I, 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 I think I, I, I saw that thing, but I have to remember where now. So uh, basically, I didn't show you, but I, I make a, a very detailed uh, plan uh, uh, on my computer of, uh, of the collection so I can find things uh, right away. Mm -hmm. So we, in, in fishes, uh, well, there are, there are big uh, specimens, so like this uh, uh, ratfish uh, that are common in uh, in, in the coast of uh, British Columbia. But we have also other bigger fish that we need to keep in, in bigger tanks. Uh, and I must admit, and to be honest, I, I have not opened any of these tanks since, I, since, I, since I'm here, but one day I, I have to do, I have to do that. Uh, uh, in, in some, uh, in some uh, fish collections, there are huge tanks to, to keep in, in alcohol uh, sharks, uh, sturgeon, and other big fish like like sunfish. So it's really uh, uh, you know it, it's not a, a collection of, of bugs. Uh, you need space. You, you need material to uh, to treat all all these things. So uh, you have seen that we have uh, various uh, various display. In, with some explanation uh, on, on various uh, features of uh, fishes. And uh, uh, we have uh, some seahorses. So uh, 
if here is almost our entire collection of seahorses because as you know there is no seahorse uh, in British Columbia and we have even a very minute uh, species extremely small you know and up to very small it's so small that you know <laughs> we, we you need a, a magnifier to see this is the adult size and it's a game uh, when you are diving in some tropical country to, to detect this uh, this species because they are hiding in gorgons and they completely mimic the gorgons so imagine that you are underwater by 20 meters deep and you see people looking some 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 divers even uh, bring magnifier on the water to to try to see this um, this specimen mm -hmm. nicole is saying so they're so the, so cute um the tiny ones and she's wondering if there are any other fish that are that small in the collection as well of other kinds oh oh yeah yes uh we have a number of uh, small fish we have uh, some larvae as well but to tell you the truth, I, I have not spotted yet where, where, where they are. No, we, we have, uh, um, I, I, the thing I don't know yet, what is the biggest specimen that we have there? Because we have, uh, we have some uh, skeleton of children, but they, they are uh, dismantled. Uh, I don't even remember where they are. Somewhere here. We had a couple of more questions, Nicola, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, one is, uh, do you wish there was more space for the fish collection? And then also, are there any fish that you wish the collection had? Uh, okay, I will answer the, the second question first. Um, uh, one thing that, that happened to me when I was in Paris, I was looking for specimens of herring. So herring uh, are common fish uh, that is uh, commercially exploited, uh, eaten uh, uh, by men and even by, uh, by animals transforming in flour. And I discovered, uh, so it was something in the mid 90s, and I did Discovered that the latest specimen of herring that was entered in the fish collection was in uh, 1880 something. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a bit surprised because I, I was thinking that what is the point to be in France and not to have all, all species? Uh, 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 entered in collection at, at regular point or, or in time. So it's what I am trying to establish here in the collection and maybe in collaboration with DFO is to uh, list uh, the uh, latest specimen for each uh, British Columbian uh, species and, and to check how we could get new uh, specimen, more recent specimen uh, um, uh, if, if they are, let's say, if the last one is uh, uh, 50 years old, I think it could. Well, because uh, for one thing, um, I, I was uh, talking about ra radio elements. Uh, we know that, that uh, we can measure in, in the collection specimen, not only fish, you know, uh, uh, before and after the first uh, uh, atomic bomb explosion. Uh, it, has, it has left uh, traces everywhere in, in the world. And, and also all the pollutants that have varied along the time. So having a long time series will, will allow us uh, in, in the end to evaluate uh, uh, what happened in terms of, of pollution and, and modification of size and so on. Uh, uh, Fisheries, it's well known that fisheries affect the, the, the size at first maturity of, of fishes. The more you, you fish a species, 
the 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 faster uh, uh, the individual will produce in, in terms of age, uh, and and all these uh, these changes that have uh, occurred in the past two hundred years can be documented uh, with uh, collection specimens. Uh, do I want more uh, specimens from other parts of the world? I would say um, if, if we do that, we need more expertise. You know, uh, there are more than 35,000 species in the world. Uh, one, one guy cannot be specialist of 35,000 uh, species. It's not possible. So uh, uh, to manage a collection, you, you, need, you need to have a good knowledge of, uh, of the species uh, that you are. Not, not being a specialist of everything, but you need to, to have a good o o overview of, of the group. So I'm, I am not sure that I want that in, in that collection, because I don't think we have uh, currently the means uh, and but uh, one thing is interesting. I will show it to you uh, in, in two minutes in the lab. We have a, a fish collection that is dedicated to uh, uh, training and, and for uh, uh, academic courses. And here, I think we 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 could get some specimen that that would be half have collection specimens, so to speak, specimens that could be damaged by, by students or by any other people who would like to see. So this is uh, uh, my first answer. Uh, uh, my answer to the second question, and my answer to the first question, that is a bit related to, to the second one, is you, you can always uh, ask for more, more space, um, but when you do that, it implies uh, uh, other costs. As I said, more people, more fluid. Uh, so you have to to balance uh, to balance uh, all these things uh, and not to overshoot. But uh, what you want to do. Currently, the collection has, let's say, a uh, uh, fifteen percent space empty. So we can still afford a, a number of specimens. But if I want to uh, uh, start um, my project to have more uh, British Columbian uh, specimens, uh, it, it may happen that in two, three, or, or five years, uh, uh, the collection will need more space. OK, I don't know if I have time, but I will show you the types. Okay, great. The cabinet of uh, types. So you see that the museum is dark, except the fish collection. I just light the fish collection. So here, here are all the types that that we uh, that we have. As I said, uh, it's only for 12 valid species and eight, eight species that were put in synonymy in the scene. Um, so it's a cabinet that I visit uh, uh, quite often, not these days, uh, but to be sure that everything uh, is uh, in order. And the last thing that I want to show you is the lab with the uh, collection used uh, for students and some specimens that are being studied. Uh, 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 Nicole says, thanks for a great talk. And the museum looks spooky, uh, very dark right now, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, but we'll be back one day. And I also just wanted to end up on a couple of questions as well while you're walking over to the lab. Uh, one of them was, uh, do you have a favorite fish in general? And then do you have another question was uh, from Chloe, do you have a favorite specimen? So I'll, I'll let those be the last couple of questions for today, if you have answers to this. Yes, all, all these are, are specimens under study and the uh, collection for training is there. Uh, and 
you see the, the lab is uh, a bit busier. Okay, I have finished. Okay. Did you have a favorite fish or specimen that you wanted to end up on? Or just to tell us about? Uh, oh no, uh, well I can show you uh, a, a sturgeon if you want. <laughs> Well, sturgeon yeah. is your favorite. I think oh, it's not a sturgeon. It, it's mm -hmm. a shark. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if we 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 wanted to show. I think they were just asking as a question. So, do you, what species of shark was it? Oh. Okay. You can show us if you want, but um, you can also just no. say the name. Uh, well, I I think it was a a, a gray shark. Uh, uh, gray reef, reef shark. Okay, I, I go back to my office now okay. because it's easier for me on the computer than on the phone. Okay. And um, uh, we, you can ask a question. Um, I think that was the last one. If anybody has any additional questions, uh, you can just uh, put the last one or two on the chat. Uh, we. Uh, the time went really fast. I wanted to say that uh, thank you to Nicola for, for doing this for us. And uh, it was very interesting. It really helps us see how much dedication and work goes behind in keeping a collection like this, uh, not just now, but also over time. And, uh, and we'll just uh, say goodbye to Nicola in the, as he makes his way to the office. And then I just have a couple of slides to show. Let's finish up. Um, and if anybody wants to share their favorite fish in the uh, in the chat, feel free to do that as well. Okay. I think I'm just going to share a slide while we're waiting. So this is inside the museum is a photograph. And um, we're doing the questions. And I just wanted to say, oh, can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say too that if you were looking for a way to support the museum in this time, we've got uh, two websites there, the donation website and the membership website. And then I just, oh, uh, we, or we'll just uh, do a plug for the next session as well. So Tia is going to be joining us from the Spencer Entomological Collection next week, same time, same day of the week, Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we also have our social media tag there. Uh, lots of resources too. Please feel free to check out those on BD at Home. Uh, and if you have any input, we definitely welcome, uh, of course, all this, uh, uh, these virtual programs are new for us. So we'd love to have your input about those. And I think we're just going to say goodbye to Nicola just one last time. I think she wanted to go back to the office. Oh, and we have a favorite fish. Sunny says her favorite fish is coral reef fish and probably the Moorish idol because she saw lots of them when she was snorkeling in Indonesia. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think we, we, are, we have one. Oh, fantastic. And also, uh, Deepti says thank you, Nicola, and we all thank you. Okay, thank you very much.